Hello everybody and welcome to the secret history living in your aquarium. Today we have, wow, just a really epic opportunity in front of us. We have some new fish in the fish room and uh, these are new fish to science. These have never been uh, studied scientifically. They're not in the hobby and uh, Honestly, they're not even in captivity other than the fella who gave me them, a man by the name of Lawrence Kent, who is uh, just very intelligent. Uh, very intelligent, and he's been to Africa over 70 times uh, on expeditions to uh, check out, catch, and um, explore cichlids and fish found there. So uh, he caught these in 2019, I believe, uh, and he was able to find a female that was holding babies in her mouth, and he was able to grab her uh, with a dip net, and then uh, grab her mouth and basically strip those fry from her mouth and bring them back to the United States. So he then raised them, and some of them had babies so likely this is one of those first generations and same with the female uh, that you'll see right here uh, they're a little larger their color is more pronounced and they're definitely the um, the dominant of both genders essentially so what are these fish obviously they're cichlids and uh, they are really nice looking cichlids right now uh, you know it's not the best lighting for them and uh, it's still early their lights just came on not too long ago but I like to feed them in the morning and then I like to feed them late at night too uh, so far since I've had them which is not long uh, but these are known as haplochromis which is a fairly large collection of fish uh, usually found in Lake Victoria and uh, Rwanda, Uganda, um, and that region kind of surrounding the Rift Lakes and southward. Uh, also in here we have some Central African, um, uh, they're from the Luanda River, uh, uh, rock cribs, and then we have a uh, of uh, pelvic acromis, uh, used to be called tiniatus, but uh, an albino pelvic acromis uh, splendens, I suppose. Uh, so uh, they're they're going undergoing name changes, but that's what the albino fish in there is. And then these are um, just sub adult, uh, a type of rock crib uh, found in Central Africa, um, rather than West Africa, which is where you find most of the former tiniatus species. Also, we got some quarries in here. Uh, they're mostly in here just to clean up what the uh, cichlids miss if they're um, chomping away at food. There's a good chance that they drop pieces, so I, I like to put something in there that's kind of a cleanup crew. Uh, but these are haplochromis enterochromis. That's like uh, with an E, like enter or interior, or no, that's not right. Interior would be with an I. Enter, like as in entering a building, uh, which E-N-T-E-R-O, and then chromis as in color. Um, and they have just the males, I mean, they color up in a myriad of colors. Right now, this is one pattern I've seen, which is kind of the dark stripe down the side, a blue uh, chin and belly, with the red all over up top but they also get this iridescent blue and yellow and spangling all over their body and then the other cool thing are those gold dots right on their anal fin that are just super pronounced and beautiful um, you see those uh, right there they, if they catch natural light man they just I mean they're they're almost blinding on the males females also have them but they're missing uh, a, a piece of the last one almost as if the pattern goes off the tail. Some of them only seem to have one of those dots, but right there you can see the other uh, prominent or um, dominant uh, female. And also uh, females uh, in this species seem to be 
predominantly yellow uh, to an olive green color, and then they've got some red also uh, throughout their body on that black stripe. And then they've got another stripe kind of above it, um, above the lateral line stripe. They've got this other uh, stripe that's a bit broken, and, and it seems to come and go depending on their mood. Um, same with the males here. You can see they've got that uh, cichlid, that kind of uh, stereotypical cichlid that we even see in um, New World cichlids or South American and Central American cichlids. That eye black, um, the black line down from the eye when they're feeding or when they're um, excited. Uh, this is not the case when they're just relaxed or kind of hanging out in the tank. Um, but they are mouth brooders, obviously, as I mentioned that they were stripped from a wild fish. And uh, they've been successfully bred now, so that's exciting. Um, the water conditions that they're kept in uh, right now are uh, pretty, pretty non-interesting in the sense that uh, we've got a little bit of leaf litter for tannins. Uh, we've got plants, which they are likely going to eat at least some portion of. And then we also have um, a very neutral water with a low TDS and a little bit of um, crushed coral and crushed shells put in there just uh, as a buffer so that we don't get any pH swings really. That's kind of the goal with that. Um, you can see the size. There's a full grown crib right there. Cribensis uh, tiniatus pulcher Nigerian red uh, would have been the, the type um, name. Now I think they just call them Nigerian Red. Uh, I don't know if they're going with Crebensis or uh, Pelvica Chromis uh, Nigerian Red, but in any case it doesn't really matter. They're, they're a Nigerian Red Belly Crib. It's a female there and you can just kind of see the color um, look muted on film sometimes. Uh, have it, I'm not filming in raw and then color correcting or anything. But it gives you an idea for the size and for the intensity of the color in that these cribs are fully colored up and uh, kind of expressing. And you can see that that's not that far off in brightness. It's just uh, such a large fish uh, coming in at about six inches right now, um, maybe seven for that big male. And some of these others, the sub-adults and things, are coming in closer to um, probably three and a half or four inches um, and it looks like this is they might get a little bit bigger but um, not a ton not a ton bigger uh, than six or seven inches uh, we've got another male here who's kind of colored up and come out he kind of has been hiding and established his own little area with this female over here who is not very colorful uh, but she does look like she has a lot of eggs in her belly, so we'll see what happens there. But they've kind of taken over a rock cave I built over there, and then the, the main rock fort or cave that I built for the big male and his harem of ladies is right here, and it's kind of an A-frame with sand and loose gravel in the middle and some other stone in it, um, hoping that... From what I gathered from Lawrence, he said that they were um, kind of making circular nests and then uh, in, in the gravel or substrate and then uh, lay the eggs, then transfer them to the mouth of the female, which is a little different than some other species. Some, only the males carry the fry. But the females carry them, and then uh, you can either grab them and get them to spit them out uh, and move them away from the parents or you can let the parents care for them and uh, that gets a little territorial which is fine but there is a chance that they could eat their own young also so you just want to be aware of that but um, as far as pH goes 7 TDS is around 150 in here because of the buffer um, and uh, 2 75 gallon hang off the back filters in a 42 gallon bow front custom size tank uh, and uh, oh they found another uh, morsel of food so um, they don't seem to be the best though at, at smelling and hunting down food in the tank yet there's another one up there and they were fighting over the two that sank immediately so we'll see what happens but um, 
just a really cool fish. And like I said, um, these are called the Malungu uh, Collection Point variety. And nobody in the U.S. other than Lawrence Kent here in Seattle has them and, and myself now. And he still has a group that he hopes to keep breeding, and I hope to do the same, and then we hope to get them out into the hobby uh, at large to make sure that there are redundant populations of them. Now, they're kind of shy in the day, but the food definitely takes away all the shyness uh, of these fish. And I know the glass is a little dirty. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of... Uh, get these guys captured. I also did a 50% water change when I got them just to kind of excite them a little bit, which seemed to work. It kind of got their gears going. It usually does with most fish. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing I want to study about these is that these also, um, by the way, you can kind of see the rainbow on the side of the males there. It's kind of like starts with a brass or olive copper color and then goes back into yellows and then greens and blues. Um, it's a really beautiful fish with the top being red and then going into pink and orange uh, at, and then bronze at the back too. So um, it's, it's kind of subtle, almost like a bass or a perch, but if you had this in a crystal clear tank with really good spotlight on it, you'd really see the colors coming out. It's hard because the manzanita is a nice red color. I mean, my hand, you can see, it looks purplish red right now in this light, too. Um, so we'll try to get some good still shots for uh, members that we'll post uh, on them. But the study I want to complete with these guys, and I've written uh, a couple different professors within the hobby, uh, that are studying cichlids, uh, and specifically haplochromous uh, cichlids and enterochromous, which they just have classified seven new species of, uh, and these are not amongst them. But there are quite a few waiting to get names or be declared part of another species, or who knows how it'll shake out. I, I don't really know. Here's another um, female that has a good belly on her with looks like eggs and stuff in there. Um, but the male's starting to get a little protective here. But back to what I was saying, the, the research I'd like to do is that um, these fish have been extremely stressed in the, uh, the ecology where they come from. Lake Victoria and um, some of the rivers and marshes where they live, uh, Nile perch or tilapia have been released. In, since the 1970s and they have just decimated the fry and sub-adult populations of a lot of different cichlids taking over their spawning range uh, and hunting and eating the fish uh, in their once kind of safe zones that were delineated amongst the cichlids that were in the lakes for eons together. So what I want to find out is if the video I did on fast start locomotion, where we talked about how fast fry can move to escape predation, I want to find out if that has any bearing on the outcome of these fish and their evolution. So right now they're finding in the lake, just since the 1975 introduction of the uh, Nile perch or tilapia, they're finding that these fish... Um, have grown teeth to eat like smaller fish. They're quick, you can see. Um, they've also grown bony plates to scrape algae in other places. So they're turning into multiple species to take advantage of any niche that's opening up because sadly those species have gone extinct in those niches. So they're doing that in the Rift Lakes and also in Lake Victoria, not technically a Rift Lake. Um, one, how closely related they are to the ones in the lake, but two, if they have shorter tails as fry, uh, and if the new fry um, in the lake have been growing those either longer tails or stronger tails, because um, here you see they've got a strong musculature in their mid-body, but there is a very narrow caudal peduncle right before the actual tail fin or caudal fin. So I would like to find out with a bit of research and data if you have any haplochromis that are wild collected, um, either pre-tilapia, uh, so I mean, the, it could be a line that's just been in captivity for 
40 years. I would love to see that too. Um, but also wild caught recently, um, I would love to see a data set measuring from the cloaca or the uh, area where they use the restroom, the little hole in their belly, um, down to uh, the very back of the tail fin. How long is that? And then at the caudal peduncle, um, measured basically from where the fin starts to where the cloaca is, measuring that midpoint, how tall uh, their, their tail fin, the meaty part is. Not the part with the fins on it, but the part on their body. Uh, and that can give us, in live bearers, it gave us a two to one ratio in that um, they have evolved and adapted uh, to the point that it's doubled in size in areas where they have high predation, uh, where guppies and other live bearers have high predation. And so what I'd like to see is if that same uh, fast start locomotion is also being selected for. The other thing they've found is that these fish are sleeping in different shifts. So uh, the ones found in the 70s were uh, diurnal, hung out in the daytime, whereas now there are nocturnal groups, there are um, some that sleep an hour on, an hour off, others that kind of take second shift <laughs> sleeping, and it's just really fascinating um, that they've been able to literally just fill in any little gap in the wild, in the niche, um, that they can exploit. And so I'm just trying to um, reach out, and I've reached out to several professors in Europe that have done data and um, measurement on all sorts of cichlids in Rift Lakes uh, and Victoria. And I'd just love to find out um, if there is a correlation between the environmental stressors and the new, um, the new introduction of tilapia into their, into their life, into their ecosystem, compared to these ones, which are, are a really cool specimen because they're not from that main group. They're not also clearly part of the aquarium trades main group. These are collected by an individual who went there personally and brought them back personally. Uh, so again, thank you so much to Lawrence Kent. Uh, this is a great uh, legacy for Sergio's old tank to take on. Really cool that now it's got some uh, neat African cichlids of uh, pretty good size in here. Probably need to get them a bigger tank eventually, but um, they were spawning in a group larger than this number at this size. Uh, in a 40 breeder, which is this size here, uh, at the place they were living before this. So hopefully the fact that we split the group in half and then have it still in a 40, hopefully they'll be okay for a little while until those females also grow up. Uh, and, and I don't know how big the females are going to get. There's literally no literature on this variety or even on the haplochromus, enterochromus, there's not much information even on, on them other than anecdotal stuff. Uh, out there and a few key species so thank you so much for watching uh, this will be a long-term project I'm working on amongst many others but I hope that you find it interesting and if you want to support my work as well as conservation work that I will be supporting along the way uh, as we find uh, worthy causes and things just like the channel always has it's where all the merchandise from my illustrations on t-shirts and things on my teespring link below all that goes to conservation and then uh, any sort of channel membership and things like that is going towards keeping the fish room going and keeping the research and videos coming uh, for anybody to access for free basically um, so thank you so much I appreciate it and if you want to get in contact with me you can leave a comment below or you can get a hold of me via my email which is uh, pretty easy to find if you just do a google search by my channel and my name. All right, guys, so have a good one. I'll talk to you later. I don't need to tell you what to do on YouTube. You know all the things uh, that creators say you should do. Uh, you're smart people, and uh, if you feel I've earned it, then go ahead and uh, do those things, ring those uh, buttons, and push those bells, and I'll talk to you guys later.